Good morning, today I'm going to share with you the new film emulation plugin by Pixel Tools, the Film Emulsion Pro, which Pixel Tools kindly sent me for free in exchange of making this video. However, before I start, I want to mention a couple of things. First of all, I am not a professional colorist by any means. All I do is these YouTube videos and that's it. And also, I have no experience when it comes to film, except if you consider using the Hanser for the last two years as experience, so please keep that in mind when watching this video. Now, Pixel Tools specifically told me that they are not trying to compete with higher-end film emulation plugins like the Hunter, Filmbox, and Genesis. They are trying to reach the affordable market by providing high-quality film emulation tools, if you will, at an affordable price. The price for this plugin, for the basic version, is only $100, and then for the pro version, it's $300. But if you use the code ROMA10 at checkout, you'll also get 10% off on any Pixel Tools plugin, if you will. There's going to be a link down below. And here is what you get with the pro version compared to the basic version. Basically, you get 16 negative stocks and three print stocks compared to only four negative stocks and one print stock. And also in the future, Pixel Tools is going to update the Pro plugin with a costume DCTL for halation and grain, but it's only going to be available with the Pro version of this plugin. A couple of other things to consider is that these plugins will only work with the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, basically the studio version. Also, as of now, they only support the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate Timeline Color Space, but at least you can use them with custom DRTs like OpenDRT and JP2499. But I don't want to focus too much on the technical information. If you want to know all the technical stuff, like how to install the plugin and how it works and whatnot, I'm going to leave some links down below for you to check out. Now let me just go into DaVinci Resolve and show you exactly how this plugin works and looks, especially compared to something like the Hunter, which I have some experience with. So with the downloaded files, you're going to get three different power grades, one for Fuji, one for Kodak, and one for Mixed. And all this does basically is it gives you a different DCTL for the negative node in here. So when this plugin launched, they only had one DCTL for the negative stocks, basically 16 negative stocks. But some people were having issues with DaVinci Resolve crashing and whatnot. So they updated the plugin and they split the negative DCTL into three different DCTLs, basically one for Fuji, one for Kodak and one for Mixed. So basically all these power grades are the same except for the negative stock DCTL. And now this is basically the node tree you're going to get with this power grade. First of all, let me go to my project settings, my color management settings more specifically. I'm using DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate as my timeline color space. And like I said, as of now, this power grade will only support DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then I'm using Rec. 709 Type A as my output color space because I'm grading on a Mac display. And the first nodes in here, the first two nodes in here is to, you know, take the color space of your camera to the timeline on color space. Basically, this is a color space transform, which takes me from s log 3 as Gamma 3 Cine to DaVinci Intermediate. And then the ODT, the output device transform, I'm using a custom DRT from JP2499. It's completely free, by the way. I'm going to leave a link for it down below. But by default, you're going to have here another uh, color space transform tool, which is built into DaVinci Resolve, basically. Next in here, I have an exposure node, which is not going to be included with the power grid. I just added this to adjust the exposure of the clip, if you will. Here is where you're going to have the negative uh, stock DCTL. And first of all, in here, you can adjust the intensity of the, you know, of the strength, basically, of the DCTL. Here is where you can adjust the exposure, temperature, tint, contrast, and then pivot for the middle gray. Here is where you can select a different negative stock. This one is set now for the Kodak, the DCTL. So you only have Kodak in here, but if you want something from Fuji, you'll click the Fuji one and select the Fuji in here. And if you want to, you know, select the mixed ones, you're going to see them in here. But I'm going to leave it for now with the Kodak one. And later on in the video, I'll show you how all of them look like with different kinds of clips. Next in here, you have the halation node and it's using the Film Look Creator halation tool in here. Just look at my nose in here. 
there's definitely a difference. But like I said, at a later stage, Pixel 2 is going to release an update for a cost and DCTL for halation and grain, but it's only going to be available with the Pro version. And now in here, there's a note for roll off just to compress slightly the highlights, it's just using the costume curves and resolve, and it's compressing as you can see the highlights in here. Here is like a sharpen node just to add a bit of sharpness to the shot. Here is grain, it's a compound node, you can open it up and then select grain for like 1080p HD. And it's again using the built-in tools and resolve, but later on they are going to update this. And then you have grain for 4K if you're using 4K footage and whatnot. And then here is gate wave just to create the camera shake film produces when shooting on film basically I guess and again it's using the built-in camera shake tool in Resolve and here is the print DCTL codec 2383, 2993 and 4G3510 and that's only going to be available with the pro version with the basic version you're only going to get codec 2383 and again you can adjust the intensity here the contrast the pivot and then the saturation as well and then finally here you have a note for deep shadows some people were complaining with the stock version of this plugin that the shadows were too lifted so pixel tools added this node in here by using the log wheels and slightly you know reducing the shadows just to add more bite into the shadows because by default as you can see let me just zoom out it's a bit too faded but what i was doing before this update i would go to the sprint node in here select the curves and just go you know with the curve and add a bit more bite to the shadows if you will but as far as i understand they are going to add a slider in the print stock later on to adjust exactly the blacks you know how contrasty you want the blacks to be basically so this is basically the power grade as you can see it is very modular meaning you can rearrange the nodes exactly how you want something that you can't really do with the Hanser. So let me show you how the Hanser works for those of you who don't know. So this is the Dehancer node we have created to keep it as simple as possible. I have an input um, device transform and output device transform, exposure node to adjust exposure. And here is the Hanser. With the Hanser, you have all the tools necessary in one window, if you will, and you cannot rearrange the tools however you want. I'm not really sure if there is any benefit to that, but if you want to do it with Film Emulsion Pro, you're going to have more flexibility than something like the Hunter. But regardless, let me just show you what kind of a look you can get as quickly as possible with Film Emulsion Pro. So first of all, I'm going to go to the negative stock in here and let me show you all of them. This is 500T, 5219, 250D, 200T, 50D, 250D, 200T, 5217, 800T, 500T. This one is by far my favorite so far at least. And then 320T. Let me switch to the Fuji negative stock, 500D, 500T Eterna, and then Eterna 250D. And now let's go to the mixed one. This is Hector Chrome 100D. This is black and white, double X Kodak. This is Vista 200 and then Kodak Aero Color. I'm going to come back to the Kodak one and select the 500T 5279 because like I said, it's my favorite one to use. And then I'm going to adjust slightly the white balance because it's a bit too yellow. Maybe add a bit of green to the tint. And then maybe I'm going to slightly increase the contrast just a little bit and increase the exposure. Now let me go to the print in here, and here is 2383, 2393, a bit more saturated than warm, and 3510 Fuji. I'm going to stick to 2383, and maybe I'm going to add a bit of saturation, and then maybe also a bit, slightly, a bit of contrast. Let me come back to the negative one and reduce the intensity something like this and now i feel like this shot is still a bit too faded i'm gonna go to the print node in here select the curves in here and just you know add a bit more bite to the shadows if you will i prefer my shots to be contrasty but if you want them to be faded you can just leave it as is i think something like this looks good but now the saturation is a bit too strong so i'm going to reduce it to like 1.075 honestly i'm kind of happy with this i want to get the result as quickly as possible this looks fantastic. Let me just select the print node in here and the negative node at the same time. And here is a before and after, before and after. If you ask me, that's a huge difference between these two nodes. I mean, with these two nodes, right? This is how the skin looks like, by the way. 
All right, now let me save this. Save the steel. Grab steel. And now I'm going to switch to the Hunter in here and I'm going to try to get the same results more or less. As you can see out of the box, I kind of prefer Film Emotion Pro out of the box because the Hunter gives you this weird kind of a look which I never really liked. First of all, it's a bit too strong and second of all, it's too faded. It just looks kind, it almost looks like log, if you will, like without the Hunter, in a way, it actually looks slightly better. But you can get good quality results with the Hunter, you just need to tweak it around a bit more, if you will, to get something good. So let me go inside here and I'm gonna use the same profile, but here you have much more print stocks, you know, uh, sorry, negative stocks to choose from. I think you have like 59 or 60 of them. So it's definitely, you know, you have more variety of choice compared to Film Emotion Pro, but I'm gonna stick to Kodak 518 just to keep it as simple as possible. And then my print is set also to Kodak 2383, just to keep it as comparable as possible. And then I'm definitely going to adjust the black point in here it's a bit too faded and then i'm going to adjust the temperature adjust the tint slightly like so i'm gonna enable the film developer and i'm going to add a bit more contrast add a bit more saturation let me play around with this a bit more and i'm gonna come back to the black point in here play around with this and maybe go to the print page in here and add more contrast slightly Go back in here and just reduce the contrast, if you will. And then maybe also the grain is just a bit too strong. It's way too much for me. So I'm going to go to like 15. Enable halation. This is also way too strong. Let's go halfway, 35. And maybe come back to the temperature in here. Add a bit more bloom and just add a bit of green. Something like so, maybe go again to the black, add a bit more black, something like this. Now it looks fantastic. Just out of the box, it looks always looks a bit weird. So this is the, you know, without the Hunter, with the Hunter. And this is the Hunter. This is Film Emotion Pro. The Hunter, Film Emotion Pro. I like the colors with Film Emotion Pro, but I like the grain and the nostalgic vintage vibe with the Hunter. Honestly, I think with Film Emotion Pro, you can get pleasing results a bit quicker. It's not that you cannot get something pleasing with the Hunter, you certainly can, but it just requires a bit more fiddling with the sliders and whatnot. And sometimes I feel like out of the box, the strength of the Hunter is just too strong with the negative stock and also with the grain and the halation, everything is just way too powerful at least for me. All right, now let's do the same thing, but with slightly lower end quality footage. This was shot with a DJI Pocket 3 in D-Log M, and I like this shot a lot. I'm just walking here. But regardless, let me do a couple of tweaks. I'm going to go to the negative DCTL in here and just select, see which one looks the best. Oh, this one is, is kind of cool, 250D. 800T is also nice. Again, I love this one the most. The 500T 5279 looks fantastic. Here is Fuji. This one from Fuji is also not bad, 500D. And let's go to the mixed one. Not a fan of this. This is black and white. Not a big fan of this. This is arrow color. I think I'm going to come back to Kodak and select 517, 5279. But I feel like I'm going to warm it up slightly just to make it a bit warmer. And then maybe add a bit more green, something like this. Maybe slightly reduce the exposure, add a bit of contrast, something like so. Go to the print. Let's see if a different one looks better. 2393. This one actually is nice. I like it. So I'm going to come back to the negative, readjust the temperature here right and then maybe add a bit more contrast come back to the print and then add maybe a bit more contrast in here and I'm going to use the print node in here with the curves and I'm just going to you know add more contrast to the blacks this is personal preference honestly I just like it and honestly I think I'm done in here just a quick grade I'm trying to get results as quickly as possible without using any additional nodes, basically. So let me put it here to the hero frame, if you will. Select the print and negative nodes. 
before and after, before and after. There is a significant difference in my personal opinion. And let me save this again as a still. And then let me go to the dehancer node. And again, out of the box, this looks, it looks like log to me. It looks, it doesn't look pleasing at all in my personal opinion, out of the box. So I'm gonna select maybe a different film stock, 550D, 200, 250. Let me see. I usually like, you know, the Hector one or the gold one. This one is kind of cool. Let's play around with this. I'm going to set it somewhere in here. Let me warm up the image slightly. Play with the tint. Go to the film developer, add a bit more saturation, a bit more contrast, increase the exposure slightly, and then go to the grain in here, reduce the grain, enable the halation, but also reduce it to about here. It's going to add a bit more saturation with color boost, something like so, and maybe slightly actually cool it down. It's a bit too warm. And I feel like I'm somewhat happy with this. This is the Hanser Film Emulsion Pro. The Hanser Film Emulsion Pro. I kind of prefer again Film Emulsion Pro because of the green colors. I mean, again, I could have tweaked more things in, with the Hanser to get similar looking results, but I feel like, like I said, it's a bit quicker to get pleasing results with Film Emulsion Pro, whereas with the Hanser, you have to fiddle with it a little bit more. Again, the Hanser, Film Emulsion Pro, the Hanser, Film Emulsion Pro. Let me just play around with it a bit more, see what I can do if I really put my time. A bit more contrast, color. All right, maybe I'm gonna play around with this as well. Okay. Okay. Something like that. Okay, this looks a bit better. And then now I kind of prefer the Hanser, except for the greens. I like the greens with Film Emulsion Pro, but it's very simple to tweak with like a, you know, hue adjustment, if you will. So the Hanser, Film Emulsion Pro, the Hanser, Film Emulsion Pro. So hopefully this was enough for you to get an overall idea how this new Film Emulsion plugin works from Pixel Tools. I think for the price it is fantastic. I mean, compared to the Hanser, it is half the price. The Hanser as of now is 600 bucks. They raised the price and I didn't actually know about it. It was for $50 as far as I remember, and now it's $600, that's a big price hike. So I think with the Film Emulsion Pro by Pixel Tools, you're getting fantastic results, and actually in most cases, you're getting better results quicker, unless you're willing to fiddle around with the sliders in the Hanser a bit more. I think for the price, it is going to be a great choice if you want to quickly add like a look to your shot and then start, you know, tweaking a couple of things and getting good results, which you can publish as quickly as possible. So again, if you are interested to buy anything from Pixel Tools, I'm going to leave a link down below with a discount code, with a 10% off discount code. And also if you are interested in the Hanser, there's going to be a link down below as well with a 10% off discount code. Thank you for watching. Let me know down below if you have any comments, questions, or tips and whatnot. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.